eventually the uh, Harvard, but in between, it was uh, the basic trainer 13. BT 13, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. It had a fixed undercarriage, a 450 horsepower engine. And that's also linked to the T6 that we see here because uh, they had a higher powered version of the BT 13 that went into competition with this machine become the advanced trainer for the US Army Air Corps. So the BT-13 was moved by Volte. That's correct. I believe it had a rather amazing given to it by the pilot. Yep, the vibrator. Because when it got near a stall, all the canopy uh, would shake. <laughs> So I believe we've got a, a single instance of the Volte BT-13 flying in Australia. One down at Albury and uh, there's another one going together with Ken Allport at, uh, in Sydney, not too far from my place. Wow, that could be great. We could see a Stearman, a Volte BT-13 and a Harvard and Wirraway all in formation. What you're seeing here is a very much improved version of the uh, the first train. Now this particular aircraft is different from the uh, the NA16 or the the Harvard one, which is known as the Harvard one. So the, It was all fabric sides. Folks, just a reminder with this wind, you may have uh, some of your paperwork or, or uh, empty cans or things like that blowing away. If you see any of that on the ground, please do pick it up and put it in the trash because uh, we don't want that turning into uh, debris or fog and getting uh, blown over into aircraft and uh, go up intakes and so on. over 15,000 of these, nearly 15,500 of these uh, produced, known as the SNJ to the US Navy, and uh, it was used by over 60 different air arms. Being flown today by Tim Dugan once again, who's from Wilton in New South Wales. He's got about 8,000 hours of uh, pilot command time, and he's been doing aerobatics for about 15 years. aircraft could be fitted with uh, single machine gun firing through the propeller arc or uh, some of the other versions. They could carry bombs, underwing rockets and they could also carry wing mounted machine guns. In the early days, in the observer's position being during the Second World War, some of them were used for carrier qualifications as well. And a few of them uh, were used as hacks by the operational squadrons. You can see there, Tim has, uh, I suppose you could say, put his undercarriage up in that, uh, that role that he just uh, completed.